welcome to the Seven Figure Squad Podcast. Coffee Anderson. What's up, baby? Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Oh, since I left. If you were to say, okay, this is what an artist will sell. This is marketable. This is what I can get out there. Entrepreneurs are watching this. Sure. Number one rule in entrepreneurship, go where you're celebrated, not tolerated. Look for who's looking for you. How do you get a new artist up off the ground? What the... How do you make yourself worthy to be found? I think one of the things are you have to be excellent in... But how do you make something boring special? You add color to it, you add joy to it. People look at what they have that makes them unique as something that's wrong. How has faith played a role in your life and how have you used faith to get you to where you're at today? The biggest thing in faith for me, I've always asked God to be my agent and be my manager. Because there's no appointment like a divine appointment. I want God to put me in the right room with the right person that needs me right now. I pray for those moments. Mm -hmm. So my guest today is American country singer, songwriter, and internet personality, internet sensation, originally from Bangs, Texas, and came to fame through his YouTube videos releasing Christian versions of mainstream music, and also how to make money with playing guitar, making music, and having a uh, marketing to your music. Also, uh, his hit song all over TikTok is the Mr. Red, White, and Blue. Welcome to the Seven Figure Squad Podcast. Coffee Anderson. What's up, baby? Big dog, man. Gave you the you, intro bro. music? Look at you. You did. <laughs> First of all, thank you for, let, for letting me come on. Oh, thank you sure. for having me, bro. Oh, man, thank you. Man, for I appreciate that. you so Absolutely. much. I'm so grateful. I had to show up. Thank I had to show up <laughs> proper. Uh, this is the best I could do, bro. <laughs> Matt got a watermelon truck downstairs pushing the melons. <laughs> Pushing the golden, the, the black diamonds. <laughs> chop a chop a chop a chop <laughs> But uh, it's it, bro. It's good, bro. I, I, I got connected to you through Ryan Stuman. Right. His Hardcore birth, Closer. His, uh, his, uh, the his man. Birth, that's right. His birthday party. And then we just kicking it uh, out his patio. And he just was a very personal guy. And, and uh, obviously Same. you stick out. Uh, I know we're sitting down right now, everybody, but he's 6'5". 6'5", six five. Six five, right? 6'5". Six 6'5". Five. Six five. Six five. Five foot 17 if you do math. <laughs> if you can count. <laughs> Private schoolers looking at you. They're looking trying, at you. They're all trying to add it looking up right you. now. <laughs> trying to add it up. But, uh, you know, it's it's not an overnight thing that you've done. And oftentimes people think that because of TikTok, because of social media. That right. People and people making young uh, making young money, uh, people at a young age. Right. You know, it's, like, you know, something like me. I'm 50 years old. You're, you're nearing 52 yourself. Calm down. Right. Right? Calm down. <laughs> hey, hey, we're, looking show, we're looking at each other's Go start the his... car, Brandon. He, he clowning already. Okay? <laughs> Embrace the silver. I'm in. Embrace the silver. I'm in. You know? It's, I'm in. Uh, yeah, but when you're looking at, you know, your evolution of music, and I was asking you, you know, your tip, the, the typical genre that you're in, country music, you're a White man's blues. Band, right? Country exactly. music. Exactly. So what's that journey like been for you? For me, I, okay, let me, my granddad uh, sang in gospel quartets. Okay. Wow. And and so it was the old school. Oh glory, glory, hallelujah. Oh, since I laid my burden down, and so yeah. Boom, 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 <laughs> boom, but it was just all voices. Wow. It was quartet, like acapellas, yeah. And so it was on the chitlin circuit. Wow. So yeah, that was where black performers could perform at that time. Okay. Well, I grew up in Central Texas and Bangs, Texas, like right in the middle, in the L armpit of Texas. L you couldn't even run out. If you was running from the police, it took you seven hours to get out of the state because I'm so in the middle of Texas. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, I will say this. We had we had a teacher that taught American history that was in witness protection. They moved him to our town because nobody ever came there. <laughs> One day, he had a thermos full of drink and was like, y'all want to know what really happened? <laughs> Is that where other insurance agents of our, our firm has gone to? I we, believe it. Yeah, we, we absolutely. Program, they yep, that calls was him. And these. Yep. Mr. Barstow, <laughs> good to see you. Hope you're good, buddy. And that wasn't really his name. Anyway, so I think going to a county fair with my friend Candy Miller, I put on jeans that were way too tight at that time. She was like, no, you can't wear that Jabot stuff. You need to wear Wranglers. It's Jabot's. So you talking 90s. Oh, yeah. She's like, you need okay. to put on some Wranglers. I go to this county fair, and it's a sale barn. So the sale barn is where they bring livestock in. People sit in the stands, and they bid on the animal. Okay, I go into the sale barn where that night it's a dance. So they bought in a trailer with a generator. Yeah. I wow. thought it was just like fog 
for yeah. the show. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it was carbon monoxide in the barn. Brr, so it's smoke coming out the top. Dang. Everybody dancing. There's an old boy. He's there. Hey, what you got cooking? How am I cooking? And the whole place is going uh, 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 jamming. Two thousand of the hottest women in our county, and I'm like. And he didn't do nothing. He didn't do the usher, throw my chain and dance. You make me want to leave the one I'm with. <laughs> Starting no, none of that. Is that yet for you? you? No, nope. <laughs> none of that. He just stood there and played a song they wanted to hear. And I was like, that. I want to do that. Wow. But when you come from that, uh, 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 oh, glory, glory, same rhythm. Good looking. What? Yeah, right. But the railroad tracks divided us. Ah. Uh, so uh. mentally, I pulled up the railroad tracks, took the sound of gospel, and put it on what he was doing on that gooseneck flatbed trailer, and here we are. I love it. That's why it's Mr. Red, White, and Blue. Come on. Because my dad served in the United States Air Force. He didn't serve for black. He didn't serve for white. He didn't serve for brown. He served for red, white, and blue, and it takes all of us to make those colors. Come on, man. Come on, man. What are we talking about? I love it. I love it. So at some point, you have to take your own fences up. Because a lot of times people say, oh, well, what are they going to think? They is in your mind. Yeah, that's right. They're in your mind. Yep. When we started this business, I would go to, count, I would go to um, county fair expos, conventions. Okay. So county fairs have conventions. Sure. So any artist listening to me, you can go to the, the, the Texas county fair convention. You can go to the Oklahoma, Tennessee, Kentucky. There's 70, 80 county fairs there with blank checks. They want a corn dog vendor. They want fencing. They want security. They also need somebody to sing on Friday and Saturday. Where? So I'll put a booth up. Okay. I'm standing next to a guy that's cooking. And I'm right. There's another woman that's a stilt walker. She's trying to get into the show. So, so, so I moved three years ago to Dallas, and the first place we went to was the Texas State Fair right here. Absolutely, the Cotton Bowl. Well, they go get their vendors from a convention. Ah. So I signed up. It was two hundred dollars at the convention. That's it to, get, to have a to, that's it to have a booth, two hundred bucks. They were having lunch. I said, "Well, can I can I showcase me and my band?" He goes, "Absolutely." We get up and play where everybody's eating. All of a sudden, people start looking, and they're not getting up and dancing. Now, all of a sudden, they're looking in their phones. They start writing things down. I'm like, they hate us. I jump off the stage, walk on the table, stand on the table in the middle of the place. And I'm going. Sweet home here in Texas. All right. Uh, uh, in West Philadelphia, born and raised on the so playground. I spent man. most of my days. So Chill now, out. I'm Max in the last sound cool now. Shit, <laughs> sound <be> right. <laughs> so now we're pulling in cultures. Yeah. I love it. That's right. I looked up after the showcase, and I'm like, they didn't like it. What, what did you call music, by the way, off camera? What did you call music? Is the music gr- is, the, is the great intruder. The great intruder. Wow. It can get into you without, you without your permission. Music allows me to be the burglar in your house, in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit. That's why you got to be careful what you listen to. Exactly. I was about to go there. And it's how they infiltrate, how that enemy, the devil, infiltrates our youth right. through the music. And, right. and For example, I was, uh, I was dropping off my son years ago. And I, I wasn't tuned to that. And uh, he's maybe, I don't know, first grade, second grade. All I heard was, you could hit it in the morning. What are you talking about hitting in the morning? What are you talking about? He's talking about an Aria Grande song. Right? Like, what are you listening to? What you, what, is that on the radio? Is that what it says? Well, it's got such a good beat. Turn off the beat because the beat is the intruder. Absolutely. Because now what it, now the positive in his head Absolutely. is you can hit it in the morning at, at right. seven years old. Right. And so when you have... When you have a, a sub, that automatically hits your red chakra and your, that's why you see the, the bounce and the twerking. Yeah. That's an automatic reaction to that sub. Wow. It's automatic reaction to that djembe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is a mating dance. Yeah, whether yeah. it's Native American, whether it's African, whether it's Brazilian, that sound. So yeah. now that you put it to the masses and you're now you're giving people that chant. Yeah. On what they can have. Yeah. I mean, hip hop changed when Little John and the East Side Boys started creating chants years ago because it used to be rap was political. They come in and talk about what's going on in my city and taking from the black man, and they were talking about politics. They would rap it to educate people on the street. Hmm. Well, then the moment that Little John and the East Side Boys came out of Atlanta and started making fight music and started using chants to uh, do it, right. it all changed. Got it. All of it flipped. And so now you're looking at it becoming a battle. Yeah. It's a fight. So it's very important to not only listen to music, but as a, as a way to improve your life, obviously, but what type of music you're listening to because you can be programmed. Yeah, you just got to be careful. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And even when you listen to the radio, because it doesn't have a cuss word, doesn't mean it's not nasty. Yeah. Like, well, exactly. You can hit it in the morning. Right. Like, it's on the radio. Right. So, yeah. Say that to somebody else's wife. Yeah. Yeah. You get knocked out. It's a different yeah, game. Yeah. yeah for See, sure. but that's so, that's so it's not clean. Got it. Right. Got it. So when, when you started uh, getting the word out, you know, uh, were you just, uh, you know, did you pick up the guitar? Uh, is just a, is a, it was a fun thing? Was it a uh, I was a two-time All-American Hooper. And I got bored playing basketball in college. And a girl I was dating, we went to visit her daddy. And I always loved guys that played acoustic, yeah. right? And worship was really big at that time. Yeah. And I went to a predominantly white university. So everybody's walking around with the guitar. Every move I make, I make in you. You make me move, Jesus. Every, you know, that's what they were doing. <laughs> Am I lying? Come on, Jordy. That was it. So I go in and I'm like, all right. So I go to I go to visit my girlfriend's parents, and the dad has all these guitars in the top room of his house. Mm -hmm. He didn't really like his wife. I didn't like his daughter. So me and him hung out the whole weekend. That ain't funny. <laughs> so <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah, cut that out. That's not going <laughs> yeah, it's, it's in. Our viewership, our viewership <laughs> went down. So he goes. I said, so, so you think you can tell heaven from hell, blue skies from pain. Can you tell a green field from a cold steel rain? A smile from a band Do you think you can tell? Mm -hmm. La -da 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 -da. Which is Pink Floyd, wish you were here. That's freaking awesome, bro. And I'm singing it, and he's playing it. And he looks uh. at me, tears in his eyes, and he goes, listen to me. You can sing. He goes, take this guitar home, which you learn how to play it. I'm going to give you a case and give you a tuner. Take this with you. He goes, you got something bigger than throwing a ball through a metal ring. Really? Really? I take the guitar. Wow. Marianne dumps me the week after that. <laughs> but you get the guitar, though. Oh, yeah. Come on. <laughs> I won. So out of that, I'm in my dorm room, and I'm trying to learn how to play, but I bought a book. Yeah. I bought a Mel Bay guitar book. It gave me guitar chords. Yeah. Four chords and the truth. I never wow. looked back. Four chords and the truth. I started leading the worship, and so this girl named Stacy comes up, and she goes, listen, you don't have basketball practice. I've already checked. I want you to come and lead worship at our Bible study. It'll be fine. 7.30 tonight. Thank you so much, buddy. <laughs> it's kind of like marriage. I was just like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Julian, so, coffee's coming. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I walked in. And instead of that, every move I, I, every move I make. The place was like. <clears throat> all of a sudden, it turns into this worship moment. Yeah. I was like, okay, there's something here. So what would you say that transfer? So what do you, what do you splash into that? Is that country? Is it, is it's, it's, what, it's, what, it's how would country, you describe it's that? It's the country sound. It's the authenticity of where I grew up because you're understanding the culture. You can't be who you aren't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had this conversation with Jermaine Dupree in Los Angeles, California at the BMI Awards. They were honoring Mary J. Blige. Keisha Cole had opened up at that time. Um, uh, it was a lot of different bands that were there. And... JD gets up and, and and he was talking and then we caught like by the bathroom outside and he just goes, brother, be who you are. He goes, don't sing no songs about the club yeah, yeah, if yeah. you ain't in the club. Sure. Because club dudes know club dudes. <laughs> they know. And yeah. Don't sing songs about the strip club if you ain't in there. Don't try to go sing gospel if you are Kelly. It was just, who are you authentically? Yeah. yeah. And that was all I knew. Got it. I would love to see how you do... I want to know. I want to hear your interpretation. Amazing Grace. Oh man, there's different ways. Your way. Um, your way. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind. But now I see. Mm. Oh, I love that. I love that. Man. So the blend yeah. of soul and the other side of worship that wasn't gospel. Yeah. It was where the rub happened. Yeah. I even sang for record labels and they couldn't get past the skin tone. And I couldn't, and these are gospel Christian record labels at that time. Because you're black. Yeah. They wow. were like, he doesn't have a choir? Like, it blew their mind. 
Because no, because people, and it's not because they're racist. That's what they're used to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to McDonald's, and all of a sudden McDonald's comes out and says, "We got shrimp." Where is my double quarter pounder with cheese? And where are the nuggets for my babies? Oh no, no, we're giving avocado tacos because we went green. I, you would burn the McDonald's yeah, sure. down because you go there for that specific thing. Yeah. So when people go, oh, they're racist, they're not. They just don't know or they're not used to it. I'm saying at uh, Grambling versus, I don't know, it was Urban Day at the um, State Fair, all black. They come up and see me singing country. was like, they started hold down and throwing stuff, laughing. And my band was like, I'm so sorry. It was truly embarrassing. But for me, I just go, they just don't know. Yeah. They've been told we're supposed to rap, and through hip hop, you're supposed to hate your women. You're supposed to tell her that bees ain't but hoes, and you're supposed to talk about rims, cars. You're supposed to say bros before hoes, mm -hmm. and you're supposed to have a woman and let everybody in the crew hit it after you get done. They hate their women. They hate themselves. And if Black Lives Matter, how come you can sell a song for less than a penny about murdering a black man? Mm. Mm. How much is it worth? Yeah. Yeah. So unless Black Lives Matter to us, they don't matter to. Yeah, come on. So that's on. the conversation. Yeah. Of, I didn't get mad. I just understood where they were. Yeah. And is, when, is that to the intruder of, of music they've been listening to? Because I, listen, my first song when I was coming up uh, in Chicago, and I'm Filipino. I'm I'm, I'm living in a Latino Italian, a uh, uh, little bit of uh, the West Side Chicago's right there, black neighborhood. And first rap song here, to all them bitches, hoes, and all that shit, right? Right. And like, this is too short. Life is too short. Right. And I'm like, right? Wait, and what? Then, cool. I like, keep playing it. And, and they're dancing. And then, then Easy E, and then Colors, and then, you know, that, that, was, that was the era we were, right. uh, that we were listening to music in. And then so, yeah, so it could be easy to hear that what's cool around your friends, but the intrusion is, is the, the programming. Right. I have a kid that's 17 years old that I'm signing to my label, right? And he has songs about whiskey because he thinks that's what's going to sell because Morgan Wallen sings about it. Uh -huh. Got and it. I tell him, the rhythm sell. The rhythm sell. Uh, sh sh uh, 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 sh sh uh, uh. Let's write something that's age appropriate for you to that rhythm. Wow. So now you're talking about marketing. It's all positioning, branding. Yeah. Okay. And he goes, okay, I get it. I said, if so you have those So songs, you're recruiting to your label. Yeah. He's, he's my uh, first one to actually sign. So we're going to put him out and... I, t I told Brandon, I was like, I got a blue-eyed me coming. <laughs> we going to kill. Blue -eyed me coming. I got a blue-eyed me coming. Yeah. Well, that's how boy bands get put together. Right. You know, you, you talk about all the, you know, the the positioning of it all. And sometimes if people don't look the part, the image don't sell. Right. Even though they have a great voice, a great rhythm. Right. But it knows. So all these things, what is comprised of a, if you were to say, okay, this is what an artist will sell. This is marketable. This is what I can get out there. We can do shows. We can do tours. We can... Let me, okay, entrepreneurs are watching this. Sure. Number one rule in entrepreneurship, go where you're celebrated, not tolerated. Look for who's looking for you. Yes. That's what we always teach. I always say that. When I was at the conventions and people would walk by, my cousin was with me, and he'd be like, hey, hey take a card. Here, take a CD. No, no, I go, uh-uh, uh-uh. People can smell thirst and broke from deep. Sit down. Wow. Sit down. Who, who did you think was going to embrace you but didn't and hurt you? It, you felt rejection? Um... I don't know because I've I've sang for everybody. If you cut a microphone on and got a check, I'm gonna go because there's, <laughs> because we have to take emotion out of business. So okay. when we have those conversations with the record labels in Nashville and they're going, I don't know if Nashville is ready. This was ten years ago. I don't know if Nashville is ready for a black hat act. That's why they put Darius in a ball cap. Interesting. You're right. I'm getting it now. So yeah, there we go. And and it, that's not I'm not upset at that. Yeah, I'm not upset at that. You go where you're celebrated. So when people are looking and they walk up to the booth and they're like, "Huh?" and I go, "You like country music? Absolutely." When's your event? Oh, well, it's, it's July 31st. And it's what are y'all looking for? We're looking for someone to headline on Friday and Saturday. Okay, so you need two bands? Yeah. Okay. Well, we have a 90 minute high energy family friendly country music show that can sell beer with the best of them. And we give you a free Facebook commercial to go with it. We're going to use our social media to help you. And I'll do a VIP for your sponsor to take care of your money and broaden the brand if that's okay with you. So you've packaged up what would benefit your customer out there. Man. I that's a turnkey. It. Turnkey, yeah. Because people that are running the event don't understand sound, stage, and lights. They yeah. want the best event. They want people to come in. Yep. 
So if I'm also giving them a social media commercial, now I'm in control of what the brand looks like. You're just sending them a picture and letting it go? No, we do it all. There you go. We do it all. We control the narrative. Talk to me about take, it. Take it from CNN. We control the narrative. What, okay, so with, with that, that's the first part. Go, we celebrate, not tolerate. What would be, why would you add on to that? Um, you have to come up with a product that's easy for someone to say yes to. Okay. Flagship product. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Um, when uh, Steve Jobs didn't sell iTunes, he sold the iPod. That's right. Lifestyle. And all of a sudden, he became the yeah. most powerful man in music. And Dell Computer's trying to sell an MP3 player. Back, back to, have you read the book uh, Very good. with, uh, with uh, Simon Sinek, Start With Why? Uh-uh. So uh, in his premise, Tell me. so at that time, both iPod and, and Dell were competing to sell an right. MP3 player. Right. But Dell positioned, hey, you put 35,000 35, songs on it, it's an MP3, it'll replace your CD. Right. You're like, well, what, what, I got a CD player. Right. I, I don't even know 35,000 songs. Right. Right. And, and how, how did iPod sell it? They sold the lifestyle. White yep. headphones. Right, dance yep. the, the girl uh, right. dancing in a commercial. But the iPod was white, and so were the uh, the earphones that connected That's to. Right, it. just like Sony did with yellow back right. in the day with with the headphones. Yep. So they're being very logical with it. Right. Apple is being very lifestyle. Well, Steve it. Jobs actually went to the record labels, went to Capitol Records, and says, "Hey, listen, I want to partner with you guys and start a label." Yeah. And they laughed him out. They were like, "You sell computers," and he said, "I'm going to crash your business." Damn. Seriously. So that's when they started giving away songs for ninety nine cents. <laughs> Even though he bought, he bought the rights to the music and they were just able to sell it on What are you going to say no? Of course. Because so many people said yes. Yeah. Right. He already had the audience. When you walk in with the audience, you already have negotiating power. That's right. That's right. If you got influence, you got the power, you got the list, the followers, the influence. Okay, so I started singing on the street. When I first started, I had a fold-up table from Ikea. I bought a $35 <laughs> license for the city of Santa Monica. I was living in L.A. Got my guitar, bought a little sound system with a cart. Put the card on it with a boat motor and an inverter so I could have sound wherever I went. Oh, it then... inverted the sound to, to DC. Wow, okay. Strapped it down with bungee cords, and I could walk with it and play. Wow. Had my CDs that we pressed up, put them on a little table with a, with a clipboard that said name, email, name, email, name, email. In that year, I made 86000 I had 9,000. Name, email, so words, you're building a database. I built, yeah, because I need repeat customers. What the music business does not do is use repeat customers. Yeah. That's right. Morgan Wallen had 96,000 people in two days at AT&T. But nobody had to give their email to get a 5% discount. So they, they don't really control their list. They no, they upon don't. Depending on however they're marketing. Apple has their list because of everybody downloading his song. Yeah. I'm number one. Are you? That's right. Same they thing have I, the list. Same thing I would say with, with selling my book. Amazon, whoever buys my book on Amazon, they have that list. I don't. Right. So, so whoever controls so you're, so, the list. You, so you still have not. That's right. Instead of have. You still have not. Interesting. So, so talk about that process. So you're, you're literally selling your music. It's, it's called Bl band to fan retail. I call it hand to hand combat. <laughs> so what it, we it did, sure the, the, the largest denomination in circulation is a $20 bill at that time before you had digital. So I made it awkward for somebody to buy one of my albums. I made two albums, right? So how did I make it awkward? It's $12 for the first two for 20. Ah. You're going to find a $10 bill on two ones? Where? Mm, exactly. Yeah. Or, Where? Or, or are you going to carry $2 bills? Like you won't. $2 bills? You won't. Yeah. So the 20 was the largest. So it was, it was easier for me to get a 20. So you package your product. Right. That was making one for 12, two for 20. So flagship product at a flagship price that right. made it easy for people to buy your product. And my job was to sell. So whenever I had a group, like a whole, like, like 50 or 60 people around me listening, okay. my job was to sell to them. So how do you sell? Most artists keep playing. Got it. How do you sell? How do you sell as a musician? Um, I said, Hey, guys, thank you so much for listening. I have albums up here, and I also have an email list. I want to let you know when I'm going to be on television, when, what appearances I'm going to have, but I want to meet you. Can you come up and say hi? And also, I want to get you the albums, and I'll autograph them for you. I'll meet you right here. Thank you so much. what I say? I want to meet you. That's it. I didn't say come meet me. Yeah. You get to meet, call, fa no, no, no. I want to meet you. Now everybody's important. I don't even call my fans fans. I say, hi, family. I love How it. we doing, family? I love it. Some people don't have family. They just have relatives. Uh, Come on, man. <laughs> they just have DNA connecting them. Skin folk don't make right? you kin folk. That's right. So yeah. just because you're in a culture doesn't mean that you feel part of it. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. How do you define family? Man, who with those who are in the trenches with you. Period. Period. Regardless of gender, race, DNA, relatives. No, because you, your folks are your folks. Yeah. And you know your folks. Yeah. 
You know your people. You know people you don't have to try with. You can just sit down and be cool. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. You can take you can take your shoes off and lay on their couch, and it's okay. You know so, your people, bro. I think there's a lot of uh, entrepreneurs out there, their initial wave, especially in our model at PHP, our initial wave is friends and family, because a lot of people just don't have enough money to advertise. And so when they try, try to build their business with their friends and family, which is the initial wave, it's not the only market you, that you go after, but their initial wave of friends and family reject them and uh, the they people lose, closer they lose to wind them, sometimes. They lose, that's right. It's yeah. like it's a, like a low blow. It's like a kidney shot. And they say, oh, you know, entrepreneurship is not for me. But that was just friends and family. That's just one market. Not even talk about Go expanding. Look for who's looking for you. Look for who's looking for you. And when you see, when you start telling the story and people's eyes light up, yes, yes, come with me. How do you make yourself worthy to be found? A few ways. I think one of the things are you have to be excellent in your delivery. There's, uh, we don't get hired to do live shows because our live because our live show is so dope. We don't have we have bands that won't let us open because they know because t- you take over. It's done. <laughs> I came to take your fans and your money, and I'm in better shape than you. Damn. And I'm six five. Mm. And I can out sing you. Maybe you can out sing me, but you can out sing me and outplay me. Maybe you can out play me, but you can't make them laugh better than I can. Great. You can out sing me. You can out play me, and you can make them laugh, but you don't have the passion. Because wow. I came from the street to get this. Yeah. So now they resonate with me. Yeah, but you don't have the patriotism either. Because I take care of my daddy who lost his hearing in the United States Air Force. Mm. Mm. And I was raised by a woman who had to deal with segregation, who put roots in my hand in the third grade. So don't act like I'm not pro-black either. Wow. What you want, yeah. I'm going to take your fans and your money. Don't put me first. <laughs> We've played shows, and, and when we go to the merch table... Which I'll say, hey guys, thank you so much. Right back there by that by that white tent. Wave your hands. All right, guys, you'll see Brandon back there. You'll see Natalie back there. I want to meet you guys. I'm gonna take my time out instead of just changing clothes and going to my bus. I want to say hi to you guys. Can you meet me over there? Thank right. you so much for spending yeah, your you. hard-earned money on me. You didn't have to do that. My t-shirts are twenty-five dollars. Hats twenty-five dollars. Appreciate it. See you there. Let's go. That's how you they all go. And they go. That's how. You how many people stage. did we have um, in Temecula for autographs? How, 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 I was there for an hour, for two hours and, and 40 minutes. Wow. Standing. Wow. Wow. Because their time and their money is important to me. So there's a line, just people waiting. There's we, just, we have video of it. Yeah. When I tell you when I tell you it's a quarter of a mile long, I'm not playing. By the way, side note, can you send me some of the food we put in the B-roll? Yeah. So when, when you are looking at separating yourself from your competition... People out there, entrepreneurs out there, how do I separate? How, how do I become different? How, right. how do I become memorable with somebody? Like, right. who, 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 let's hire the guy with, uh, uh, with, the, with the cowboy hat, a black man in a cowboy hat. Right. May not know your name. Right. But so how does somebody stick out to somebody? A few things. Become memorable? You, you, you stand out because you need to find out what's missing. Okay. You need to find out what's missing and fill that hole. What do you think was missing in, in your career? Um, what's radio airplay for me to go to the next level would yeah. be radio airplay. Cause so yeah. many people fall in love with the songs that they hear on radio. Country music. People are still listening to radio in their trucks while they're working. <laughs> they don't have time to go to their phone and pick a playlist and do it. They don't do that. They're working. They're out. Their hands are in the dirt. They're taking care of cattle. To this day. They're, to this day. They still are still using radio. Terrestrial radio. Ter- country music is still ran by terrestrial radio. Wow. It has another 20 months before it's, before it's gone. Okay. So that's what I'm missing. But in my business, we were missing someone that was authentic but had a soul voice. Also that had energy. A lot of it is slow, dreary, and yeah. I'm coming in happy. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I made it off of an 11-acre goat farm out of Bangs, Texas. I'm the happiest dude in the room. They paid me $7 on a warm Dr. Pepper. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Country music fans, make some noise. Let's go. I love it. Yeah. We gone. That's it, man. We well, yeah. that, That's the passion. That's the love. Because there's not that energy. Bam. So when you feel that level of, this guy's, I love this. Yeah. What's missing in the business? Yeah. Entrepreneurs, everybody has the 1992 Lamborghini Gallardo and the fake teeth. What? How are you different? People that are working folks out. All the influencers that are doing uh, physical training, what, now you have an app. Now you're on school. And I, what makes you different? What's the yeah, niche? Yeah. Are you teaching people that are traveling? Is it the businessman that wants to be in shape? Do you see him how to work out in a hotel room? Mm. 
go rent a hotel room and make seven hours of content showing him how to do push-ups with his foot on the bed. Find your niche and, and double down in that. Yeah. What about the mom that just had a baby that doesn't feel good about herself? Get that mama up. Get on a workout plan. Get on some vitamins and nutrients to give her the energy of what she needs. Yeah. What yeah. about the guy that's blowing his body out and he's just hurting? Find a way to sell him TRT. What are we doing? What's missing? Yeah. If you replicate, you'll never be... Come on, man. <laughs> Lauren Hill said, you don't create. You just wait to take my tape and replicate and be a duplicate. Hey, wow. Well, pro, right, Ecclesiastes, nothing new is created under the sun. Right. King Solomon, right? Nothing new is created underneath the sun, but the way you deliver it is always special. It's unique. Unique to you. It's God-given yeah. talent. Given you How you get a kid to eat green beans when they little? That's, yeah. right. That's right. That's right. Airplane time. Delivery. Yeah. yeah. Delivery is different. You're unique. Your uniqueness is different. What's your delivery? Because that's what people think because, you know, I'm in the insurance business and many people are either in real estate or solar or whatever, mortgages, whatever, taxes. They're watching the show. Like, well, how can I take a boring industry and make it sexy? Well, you, you just said, you make it sexy. Absolutely. You, you make it interesting. You, if you if make you're doing taxes, how do you do taxes? The worst month of the year is April. I'm going to fix you before April. Call the man with the red boots. Boom, put your boot up on the table. <laughs> red boots to get you fixed. I'm clicking them. We're going to take you home. <laughs> I love it. What's different? Shit. I'm wearing all yellow. Look at what happened with the Savannah Bananas. Okay. They took a boring-ass sport in baseball. Wow. Okay, you're correct. And then and what? Like and now the umpire back there. Oh, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. They, they, right. they, he can't even ump. Right. I need a short dude with a big booty. Cool. All right, you're going to be the umpire. Put this outfit on. <laughs> Throws out a pitch. Ball. Right. All that, all that for a ball. <laughs> right. He went to Magic Mike and was like, any ex-athletes that don't want to do this no more? Me, I play baseball. Come on. Wow. Got them abs. Open up that jersey. Let's sell to these mamas and babies. What's different? How do you make something boring special? You add color to it. You add joy to it. Uh, take a stab at it. Take my industry. How do you add color, fun, and passion, excitement to the insurance industry? We got our, we got ourselves. I wanted to see what your lens would be, your perspective from, from your viewpoint. How, you, how would you sell insurance the coffee Anderson style? What, you, know what, you know what you do that makes it special? You acknowledge hard work. Uh, that's right. How many dads right now don't get a, a pat on the back right. for all the stuff they go through for feeding their family? That's right. For making a mortgage every month? That's right. They don't. Mm -hmm. Ever. Ever. It's expected. How many moms for holding it down? Yeah, all the time. All the time. Mother's Day packed. People don't get acknowledgement. So in your industry, you know what? You sold one policy. Hey, hey, That's hey. Right. hey. Right. And they come up, oh, oh my, I want this feeling again. That's right. Let me sell a thousand now. That's right. Now all of a sudden, now they got content to share with the family and the friends. Oh, we got an insurance. He's killing it right, right now. I'm winning, mom. I'm winning. Acknowledgement right. and appreciation is underappreciated. Yeah. When I'm at the show, and wow. he'll, he'll tell you, I'm on stage, and I'm like, thank you so much for clapping. Let's go. Uh, look at you. Boy, y'all are ready to party tonight, even if they aren't. I, I am. I want to dance a little bit more. You sound so good singing my songs. Sing louder. Let's go. And they may not be, but you're speaking a, you're, in sales, what do you call that? Uh, uh, assumptive clothes, right? So you're guiding them to an area you're, you're leading people to by speaking that into existence. Entrepreneurs listening to this, everything is in sales. Everyone is selling, even your pastor. He's selling hope on Sunday. Oh, for sure. You're right. He's selling a hope. And, he, and he's never been to the destination he's talking about. No. Uh. <laughs> I ain't never been there. <laughs> never physically met Jesus. Nope. Never shook God's hand. Nope. But he's selling But once heaven. you have that moment, oh, taste and see. He's trying to let you know that once you taste. it's We're all in sales. Yeah. He's just selling forever. His sale is different. How did you learn how to sell? What, what, what was your observation? What did you... I've been selling since I was little. I was selling my mama on why I need to watch cartoons instead of she watching Young and the Restless. <laughs> Young I came out selling. People don't even remember that, Young and the Restless. Yeah. Yeah. Nick, Nicky and Victor. Gro I was up, watching them, dog. Come on. We used to call the Young and the Restless. But they... <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> For sure. And then you the, turn on Pre-Christ, pre -Christ, okay? Pre-Christ, okay? But... <laughs> Whatever. We ain't blind. So how do you sell yourself, again, in a, in, in a genre where you're opposite of what fits that genre? They need to know you. People always say, oh, well, it's political. It's the good old boy network. No, they deal with who they know and trust. So you need to get in a room. So you've never made your situation being black as a hindrance to you growing your career? No, I think when I walk in the room, I'm the purple cow. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. I think I'm the purple cow. It's interesting because with narrative is, for example, uh, you just said I was handed a, a roots in the third grade. Right. 
you didn't look at America differently, the, the patriotism you have for America, but you read Roots at third grade. It's, a, it's not a positive book about the black man's experience. It was reality. Okay. But this is the difference. My mom had certain bathrooms that she had to pee in when she was little. Right. When I went to Mr. Gaddy's Pizza or Pizza Inn, there was no bathrooms that said colored. So I felt like, oh, she went through that. It's not like that anymore. Let me go. I can run. It's in the past. Because, forward, yeah. because the, the glass ceiling and the, and the fences that she had to jump aren't there anymore for me. Wow. I just need to find out who's looking for me. And this is Bangs, Texas. You Bangs, Texas. In Bangs, Texas? Bangs, Texas. What do, you, what do you say to people out there that say, well, listen, I'm Filipino, I'm Mexican, I'm black, da, 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 da. I can't succeed. It's so hard. The people won't listen to me because I'm this, I'm that. Double down on it. Double down on it. Hey, I know I'm a black man singing country music. About time. I said, how many of y'all got a TV at home? I got a TV. Is your TV in color? It's better, ain't it? <laughs> so is the country music. Come on, somebody. Ah, they go crazy. That's, I double down on that's it. That's selling it. I double down on it. They had, a, they had an artist. Dude had a pig nose. He looked like a hog, son. <laughs> you hear me? And, and was trying to sing. Mm -hmm. He should have named himself Porky Jones. Yeah, yeah. You look like a pig. Double down on it. He should have had pig hats, pig gear. He should have played at the University of Arkansas. So high. He should have done everything pig based. Should have had, this. I'm, I'm Porky Jones, and this is the Bacon Crew. Everybody dressed like bacon, smell it, whatever. He should have sold his own bacon at Walmart. Yeah. People look at what they have that makes them unique as something that's wrong. Stop wow. playing. Wow. Have you seen This Is Us? The woman that's overweight. She didn't look at it as something I shouldn't audition. She's still auditioning and getting and killing it. Now wow. she's singing country music. Wow. Wow. What are we talking about? Yeah, yeah. Michael Blackson. Michael Blackson looked like a thumbprint. <laughs> exactly. And exactly. named himself Black Sun. <laughs> That's not his name. Wow. His name was like, um, gee, 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 gop, gop. Yeah. something. <laughs> you know where he's from. Stop playing. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm going to America, mother sucker, and naming myself <laughs> Michael Blackson. <laughs> Instead of Michael Jackson. It's amazing. That's right. When do you take... Take I your weaknesses and it. make them strengths. Wow. wow. If you ugly, say it. I'm the ugly tax guy. You know, it's, uh, it's amazing how in America today, such lack of patriotism. I mean, we're, watch we're watching Olympics right now. There's so many people that have been turned off by Olympics for, for obvious reasons, for how they had the uh, opening ceremony. But I don't want to talk about that. I'm talking about the patriotism, the drop in patriotism in America. And I disagree. Held that okay. You disagree? I disagree. I think there's a drop in patriotism on television. Okay. Bruh, I sang in, in, in um, this, I mean, in little nothing town. Well, I don't say nothing town, but in a little small town north of Dallas. And they had 2,500 people. It was the most people they ever had on the 4th of July for a concert. We had, we had more than 10,000 people on July 3rd. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even the 4th. The venue only holds 3,500. We had 10,000. We had on, you got to see the, the drone shot. Got it. it went from the stage to the street. And the police was like, uh, uh, they just put cones and tell people to go around because people were sitting in the street. So in other words, you're, what you're saying is we watch the NFL, we watch the NBA, we watch sports, and they're, they're in an era where people are kneeling down during the national anthem. You see uh, Olympic that, athletes. That, that, was, just, that, was, that was six years ago. Correct. So LeBron so, just carried the flag in the Olympics. Correct. Correct. They had to switch because middle America wasn't buying it no more. They're, they're sick of it. When you have someone in LeBron James carrying the flag... And now Beyonce's in a USA bathing suit, mm -hmm. smiling and grinning. Mm -hmm. We didn't mess with their money. Yeah, that's right. So turn it around. No, patri but patriotism has not been as apparent on television. It is alive and well in middle. Yeah. Don't don't run from it. Okay. So with keep that going. Said, I'm sorry. Now, with that being said, what is your favorite American patriotic song? Is it "America the Beautiful"? Is it? Uh, um, what would it's, you say? it's a song I wrote called "Mr. Red, White, and Blue." Play it. We'd love to hear it. It's the guts and it's the glory A hundred stripes, a hundred stories It's the pledge of allegiance on the 4th of July It's some handwritten letters from home It's some sleepless nights alone It's his newborn baby he left with his wife He's Mr. Red, White and Blue Play down here Mr. Red, White, and Blue For these stars and stripes Red, White, and Blue The 
stand on the front line He'll pay the ultimate price Mr. Red, White, and Blue America, uh, it got me. Thank bro. you for your service, uh, man. Thank you, bro. Thanks when it's song, bro. when it's real, sure. when you've lived it. He was the man of the house when he was born. His family is proud, yet they're torn. If you knew him, you would understand. Cause we were raised on how to be brave Just to see that flag still wave But then he came home with only one hand He's Mr. Red, White, and Blue Lay down his life Mr. Sure. Red, White, and Blue For these stars and stripes White and Blue His stand on the front line He'll pay the ultimate price Mr. Red, White, and Blue Lay down yeah. his life Mr. Red, White, and Blue For these stars and stripes <laughs> Woo! For those of you not here, Jordan has Jordan on the beatbox. Absolutely. Bro, thanks, 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 for that, thanks for that blessing, brother. Thanks for that blessing. Um... Why, why'd you feel that? Ah, you know, she's a big... Why'd I feel that? <laughs> I'm blessed to be here, bro. I'm blessed to be here. You know, uh, three deployments, two combat tours. I'm glad I'm here, man. Uh, I'm thinking about my children. I'm thinking about my wife. I'm thinking about my parents. I'm thinking about my house. Uh, just a blessing, bro. I remember uh, I wrote in my faith made, uh, book, Faith Made Millionaire, uh, uh, Navy, um, Navy Petty Officers. I'm gearing up going to Somali, Africa. And um, if you know anything about it, being on a Navy ship, listen, if you're in the Navy, don't talk to me. I'm a Marine. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Stupid shit like that, right? These brothers they didn't care. Boldness, spirit of bones came up. Listen, you listen, Marine, if you're not going to come back home tonight, because we heard the reports, that there's a 30% of our inspector to come back. Uh, you guys launched into the Mogadishu. You guys, we got, you guys just came from signing your wills and life insurance policy. I mean, that's the, where I was coming from. I just signed my will. Life insurance. I'm eight, 18, 19 years old. I'm signing my will, life insurance policy, make sure it's intact, make sure my beneficiaries are right. And I'm going to the helicopter. I'm sitting at to put my armor to make sure I don't get shot in the ass on the, on the way down. And so I'm gearing up. I'm armoring up. We have a mission at 3 o'clock in the morning. Navy veteran or Navy uh, uh, pay officer says, if you don't come home tonight, do you know where you'd end up? So when you're singing that, I'm thinking about him. He didn't care if he was in the Navy. He was talking to not a Marine. He was talking to a man. He cared about his soul. Mm -hmm. And had that guy not approached me, my life with Christ is not here. My life, he planted a seed in me that delivered me, that got me into a relationship that... Your babies would have a very different daddy. <laughs> if not half a body, half a mind. Yeah. And so, praise God. And uh, that's what I'm... Feeling. I thank you for uh, ushering that moment. I've never done this on a podcast, but uh, thank you, Coffee Anderson. Appreciate that, big dog. Um, <laughs> on to uh, more inspiring news uh, conversation. Talk to us about your music course. How do you build a course? I looked at it. It's about six modules, seven modules. Uh, what inspired you teaching that course? And how can somebody in their field also create a course like that? The moment you're having right now. Everybody watching this is going to have that moment. They're going to have the moment where they realize it's bigger than them. Okay, and when when I created the course, I could sell it. And Billy Jean is marketing is a buddy of mine. Billy Jean, I love him. I've known him since love he was six, <laughs> known him since he was sixteen. Really, he's, he's nuts. Bold. He's nuts. He's been crazy since he was little. Um, we we sold that. We could sell that course for seven grand, easy, because it's so much material that covers yeah. the real and how I've gotten to this point. Yeah, and from even just a reality show module of how to get on American Idol, how to get onto The Voice, yeah. how to get on the Nashville Star. Because a lot of people, they don't have auditions where they are to make bands. And television can do that for you. I created that in a chorus because yeah. I've done two of those shows. Yeah. Wow. Um, how to use music, how to use AI is the new one that we're creating right now. 
um, it's only $99. And I want, because a lot of musicians don't know how to make money. And maybe you have a kid that can sing. Maybe you have a talented family member that you want to buy this for. That course is going to cover all those things. I do. My because daughter. that energy yeah. that I have, the times yeah. when I felt like I wasn't going to make it, but I got up anyway because I was looking at my daughter Savannah Jean's eyes. I looked at why well, I couldn't afford Christmas toys. And so I was like, other people are feeling that same way. Let me make a system that that's foolproof. And I don't need a test system because I'm using myself to test it. You're the case study. I'm the case study. <laughs> so all these fake managers, I saw some guy who's like, I used to manage Taylor Swift by this program. Sh shut up. There's a reason why she's successful and you at home. Ah, Selling a course. You'd be still bad on tour with her. <laughs> Come, Come on. Right. So this is created to help people that really want it. Yeah. That really want it. Um, this is the Walmart of marketing systems. It's inexpensive, but it's the realest on the block. By the way, for those of you, I just want to say, if you, if you I'm to purchase this course, man, drop it in, uh, we're going to drop the link here. Make money uh, with coffee.com. There it is. We're going to make sure you guys get access yep. to it. Make money with coffee.com. Click on that. And uh, it is a system that we've, that we've put together. Brendan put it together with all the different modules. We give away free Facebook lower thirds. We yep. give away all the things that wow. spin that say YouTube. We give you all of the, the things that you need to make your videos look pro because now there's a different standard. Yeah. So the newest things that we're going to go over video with, and he's going to teach it, is how to use CapCut, how we also use AI, and then also how to create music at a high frequency. Let's talk about building a team. You got Brandon here. So how did you go find your staff, your team, to help build you, help you build your brand? I found people that were just like me. You, if you look at a mule and you look at a quarter horse, a mule got a long neck and four hooves, <laughs> but one of them can reproduce and one of them can't. The quarter horse not only can have a baby and reproduce, it can make money. That mule is only used for one thing. I didn't know that. Absolutely. Okay, I'm sorry. Chicago can be coming up. No, you're good. <laughs> there's, 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 there's birds. They both have a beak. They both have wings. Yeah. But come Thanksgiving, the turkey going to get eight, and the eagle is still going to be flying. Yeah, for sure. I need to find other eagles. Ah. If you see an eagle hanging out with a turkey, it doesn't fit. I'll, I had to get all the turkeys out of my crew. Bingo. How do you uh, how do you make sure that there's a long term plan for? Will you tell, listen, I want to do my thing to build you up. You, you and I have this concept. Because you tell them the truth. Okay. When I talk, when I, I, I talked to Brandon, I was like, "Hey, move to Texas." He's but, like, "What?" I said, "Come with me. Come help build this thing." Orig originally from where? Indiana. We no, went okay, and shot okay. a video with another artist. Uh -huh. He's shooting the video. Yeah. I'm saying the same stuff he is, and nobody else is catching what we catch. And I'm like, "You like me?" He's like, "Bro." These people slow, they don't want to work. I said, these people slow, they don't want... And we, it's the Spider-Man meme. We point at each other like... <laughs> and he pointed at you. <laughs> and so I was like, give me a number. I was like, hey, come to Texas. I'll help you. Yeah. Come on. I can't pay you everything, but I can put you on a little bit of payroll. Yeah. I said, sell your house. What? I said, sell the house. Bingo. It's bold. Get money for it. So you believe in your vision enough to recruit somebody to come down here. But I also believe in his talent. Yeah. And he was like, all right, cool. Let's do it. He sold his house. Wow. Brought his little family. We're like, cool. Let's, let's roll. It's, it's, it's one of those things where you go, you, you got to be honest in business no matter what. Don't, don't lie about your numbers. Tell people exactly where you are because yeah. that's business. Yeah. I got a call and a guy was like, hey, we want you to come open up and sing in Lake Tahoe. He goes, the venue hosts 3,000 people. I just want you to fill it up. I got $80,000 for you. I said, no, I won't do it. I said, I can sell 1500 I said, I'll charge you thirty. What? He goes, I have eighty. dollars and I'm, I have 3000 I said, I can't do 3000 I can do 1500 So I'll charge you 30 And if you can handle rooms and maybe get another booking for me, that'd be great. Why would you do that? I said, because it's business. I'm not going to lie to you. Because then you're going to tell 10 people that I didn't fill up the venue. Oh, wow. Can't lie in business. Yeah, yeah. Tell the numbers exactly where you are. Don't be yeah. ashamed of it. Sure. You can't sell a billion iPods if you don't sell one. So, uh... When we were having a conversation about you coming to the podcast, you were being uh, booked for a business conference with, with Ryan. So, so if you expand, you've expanded outside of just being a artist, right? It's also going to motivational speaking, inspirational to other motivational entrepreneurs. Motivational speaking, it, marketing. I've been hired by Chevrolet two years back to back to just do social media for them. What at okay. thirteen thousand five hundred a month? So that's three hundred G's, easy in two years with them. I've done it. I've worked with the Ford Center. I've worked with the Dallas Cowboys. Fourth center in terms of the, in Frisco. Yeah, I played okay. uh, the the draft night party oh, in front man. of 4,000 crazy Cowboy fans. I love it. I love it. At some point you go, hmm, I'm not going to put a fence on myself. 
Let me ask you a question. So somebody says, listen, I got talent, I, I got I got the skill. Okay, so how do I how do I start now? And twelve months from now, I have a much I've, I've built my brand. I have a much different outcome. Twelve months from now, twenty four months from now, what would be the action plan? For example, the the, the young man you just they just uh, recruited to right. be part of your label. How do you get a new artist up off the ground? Well, the music marketing, the make money with Cafe, the music get marketing the system. You get everything of how we do it. I'm not that, I'm not going to gatekeep information. You can't. Not if you want people to win. Yeah. And this isn't some, oh, I can find it on YouTube. You don't even know what to look for. <laughs> you don't know how to create an elevator pitch. It's 99 bucks. It's 99 bucks. Come for on. real. Honestly. I went to five guys and ordered a number <laughs> one. It, it was $24 to get a burger, <laughs> fries, and a drink. $24. What kind of cow y'all killed? You went to five guys, but really buying the price for 10 guys. Right. <laughs> now, I'll never go back. Five guys, you better get it right. Everybody's already talking about your prices being over inflated. Yeah. Quit playing. Sure, man. But anyway, I think you, you buy the system and you learn it. But even if you don't buy the system, learn from people like this. Get on these podcasts. Listen to everything Matt has to say. Get the digital book. Listen to it if you, if you can't read it. When you're at work, you need to be having these things in your brain. Learn Purple Cow from Seth Godin. Get the G code from Ryan Stuman. Get all of this information. It's out there. How did you put the, 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 the outline together? How, did you just start with, okay, let me just brainstorm. How did you create your course? Uh, we figured out what things were working and what wasn't. Okay. And you, we videoed you, that. We, we being Billy. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, Billy, yeah. Billy, Billy Jean. Oh, yeah. yeah. Billy was like, sit in front of him and just, just do it. Let's go. But he had me do an hour and a half with artists a week for six weeks. And so we got on Zoom okay. with like 150 artists and okay. managers and agents. And I just taught them the system. And they asked questions on what they were going through. And we just went through with everybody. It's crazy. So in this process of doing it, you created a course. Yeah. No kidding. I love it. I love it. So, so that if somebody out there who's got a talent, they got a skill that somebody else can learn to as well, is, is that a recommendation for you? Like teach people how to play piano, teach people oh, finance, yeah. teach always, people. Always, always right. teach. Okay. Um, the, the largest search engine in the world is YouTube. So I think, I think you can pull people in with YouTube and then put them into something else. But I get a stand store. Stand store is great. Mm -hmm. um, they don't take any of the money. Mm -hmm. The system.io mm -hmm. is an amazing system for setting up and selling. It's it, off the chain. Is, is, the, are these, uh, is that AI type of platforms? Yeah, but okay. it also works with, it's an unlimited email list. Okay. They, they don't charge you to send out emails. Oh, wow. Okay. You just pay the, the cover every month and it works for you. It's, there's so much you can do. So, so system.io is kind of crazy. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you'd say over your career, one of the biggest assets that you've built is a list. So is a list for sure, but also value with social media. Social media is great. The difference between me and other artists is that I talked into my camera and you don't. Hmm. Hmm. Give me an example. Um, I'll pop up on my phone and sing. And they didn't. I... Okay, so when I first started, I built my little website on iWeb, which you can build on anything right now. Now GoDaddy yeah. uses AI. Once you buy a domain right. and describe your website, it builds a website in five seconds using ChatGPT. So, so the the weeks of spending tell yeah, the weeks of spending time to build a website, it builds it for you, and yeah. you tell them what you want in it. Yeah. And yeah. so now your website is already done, and you can go get HTML code or whatever, and do a pre order, and go from there and sell. So the the tools are there, off top. Is that what, what questions you ask me? Does, does that answer? No, it? that's beautiful. That's beautiful. What, so, last question I want to ask you is because I, I bumped into you in church, right? right? I bumped into your church to elevate life. Uh -huh. uh, how is faith? How would you define? Because my book is Faith Made Millionaire, and I give credit to my faith, not to me, not even to my team, even though they give more credit than, than me. How would you say faith has played itself a role, big, small? Either way, how has faith played a role in your life, and how have you used faith to get you to where you're at today? A um, few things. I think I love the example of Jesus. I love the New Testament. Love Mark. I love Mark's version of Jesus. Okay. I do. He was a little sarcastic, kind of one-word answers, kind of like Clint Eastwood type Jesus. <laughs> I like that guy. Um, for me, I, it, it's the example that I need. Uh, boundaries give you freedom. And when you have boundaries, when you have a law— there's peace inside of that. When you're lawless, it's chaos and rebellion. A rebellion is a form of witchcraft. Mm. So that's why we don't discipline our kids for making mistakes. We discipline them for rebellion. 
And when you can't listen, when you can't follow direction, that's different. That's a real conversation I'm going to have with your behind yeah. until you understand that boundaries give you freedom. Yeah. If you put a yard up and you got a dog in it, he can run crazy. Sure. But if you don't have a fence, you got him on a leash, he can only go so far. Yeah. So when you think about it, the word of God is going to give you those boundaries. I needed boundaries, 100%. So that, that's what it gave me and also gave me an example on what I wanted to live like in the example of Jesus Christ. I love it. I love what he has to say. Jesus was so compelling that his natural life brother, James, mm -hmm. ended up writing a book for the New Testament, but he saw him every day. Yeah. He's like, oh, that's my little brother. He, I'm, man, shut up, shut up, boy. You st please, you know, you, you, you in my room. Get out of my room, Jesus. That he was a little bro. When you start writing about him being the son of God, he had to be compelling. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So, in faith, the the biggest thing in faith for me, I've always asked God to be my agent and be my manager, because hmm. there's no appointment like a divine appointment. Right. I need. I I want timing. I want God to put me in the right room with the right person that needs me right now. I pray for those moments. Wait, for me, it's a divine appointment to meet you at Ryan's birthday party, and then we're taking both flights. I see you on a Sunday morning, <laughs> and you come right behind me. So excuse me, can I take your bags? <laughs> I'm like, bro, I gotta have you on my podcast. Um, Thank you for having me. Oh, bro, this is special. Uh, honor, bro. We can do it again. There's so much to cover. It is, and, it I, is. and I hate that it was only an hour. But uh, <laughs> thank you guys for listening. Thank you for watching. Click like, click subscribe, download, and buy everything this man has. You success is duplicated, and when you learn what works, you just yeah. replicate. You just do it again. Hundred percent. Can you uh, can you uh, send us off with your favorites? Uh, oh. Gospel country song. Oh man, listen. Tell me. There's so many. Oh God, don't do your, this. Your, your favorite, bro. Your favorite. Uh. Oh glory, glory, hallelujah. Jordan, jump in. Since I lay my burdens down, glory, glory. Make sure you follow Coffee Anderson. Come Thank on. you so much Thank for you, being on the 7 Free Spot Podcast. Buddy. Guys, appreciate you. Please put your biggest comments, thoughts, feedbacks. You agree with us, you don't agree with us, please let us know in the comment section below. With that being said, subscribe, like, and till we meet again. See you next week. Till we meet again. Continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>